In case if you see my screen right now. So let's start about color theory. So color theory is basically uh, we're going to study about light. You don't see in the stream. It should be. It should work. It's live on Twitch because of my upload rate. That's the problem. Okay, nice. So, what we're going to do is learning about light theory. I also explain about how to study light theory. And we go beyond that and study some of, uh, explain you a little bit about mood paintings and how to approach those things, okay? So let's start with light theory. So light theory is, I think, one of the biggest thing when it comes to painting, because light is basically a thing that is based on the sun, you know? You have the sun here. And there are different types of light, uh, uh, light things that goes around the ball. But in ways of practice, we can practice with an airbrush, where we just try to capture how it works or where it comes from, you know? And one with a paintbrush, where we actually paint uh, the whole entire thing. But before that, let me just go here and explain you all these parts about uh, the ball, what type of light sources and sources inside the ball exists. And by the way, I, I captured this with the ball uh, because it's, it goes in every direction instead of the box. It's okay to do that with the box too, but anyway, let's start. Um, so first of all, the terminator, uh, not the terminator, first of all, what happens and how light reacts to the to the ball uh, take the sun as example if the sun hits it it hits it uh, with 100 percent of strength so it goes exactly like this everywhere as you probably see right now then probably bounces off bounces again until it goes some, somewhere else into the darkness here. So light is like, you know, this firefighter used that uh, that thing to actually uh, dis uh, distinguish fire. I don't know what it's called. I think fire throw or something. Or hydrant, fire hydrant. From the fire hydrant, you get this kind of thing. I just don't know the right uh, term term or word for it. But anyway, you guys definitely know now it hits 100% the target. It's like a light beam, you know? And as soon as this light beam hits the target, it bounces straight up until it's, it finds the ground or the upside thing, you know? Because imagine you have here a light and it bounces off non-stop. Same happens uh, to here. Bounces in every position that you can imagine. And we call it sometimes bar bounce light or reflect light. And reflect light usually works all the time like this. It's, it's a target that non-stop hits something, even though we have feel something or probably Probably it goes much more than that. It hits the target non-stop until, but with with 90 degree, you know, not 90 degree, but a, a straight line, and then it bounces off. So this is what reflect light does to us, and also how light would work in in theory. So now let me explain a little bit about Terminator and the Terminator is basically this surface that goes around and actually captures one side of it. This side is completely in darkness, this side is completely in light. If you look at the 
those pictures, uh, you see that the Terminator is slightly here, non-stop. It captures basically one side of it, which one of it is the shadow, the light form, and the shadow form. That, that's what, one of the reasons why I call it form, in terms of painting, and not shape. Uh, in shape, I always uh, call it if it's line drawing, a line drawing thing. But now, let's we look at, yeah, basically, light form, shadow form, you know. Terminator. And now this one is the highlight, where it's basically with hundreds percent the the strength of the sun or the strength of the light beam reacts to that. You know, it's exactly on this point. That's why I said said with the fire thing, what firefighter used to actually uh, take out water. You know, or distinguish fire. That's one of the reasons why this highlight exists in the first place. The other thing is uh, core shadow. And core shadow is basically about, okay, the darkest dark in a region that cannot actually approach it. This one is totally wrong here. I, I usually should add a reflect light or a bounce light into that. This is a reflect light. Here, here we can probably add a room light if we actually do that. Because all light light source hits the target, bounces down, or maybe it comes from the other side, you know? Maybe there is another side of it. That's why we have a room light, which is the other part of it. Uh, just write it down really fast. Just uh, give me some time to find the right brush. And I'll paste it on. So rim light happens only if the target is hit by a secondary light source that goes behind this ball. Which is the other thing of it. And let me take this one. Uh, by the way, in school you learn nine different types of light sources. Here we have probably twelve. The rest of the three I learned from my light artist. Uh, I think it's his name was. Uh, something with. Uh, I've I completely forgot it. I'm sorry. But remind me of it. I going to to know his name soon enough. But he, what he basically teach me is about center light and about um, penumbras. And penumbras happens if the light source, the farther away the light is, the more uh, the more you you barely see see it really strong, so it's a really less light source. But then you see it really strong here because the target is near to the ball. The center light is basically the the center of the light where the highlight is. Uh, if we calculate our our light source, you know. Like this, it goes around, and then basically set up a point for the highlight, and based on that, we go here up, and now we can describe the center light because it's somewhere in the center here is the highlight. I'm sorry if it if it's this complicated, but later on I'm going to show you some examples where everything is. So center light here 
is that's way too strong. Center light is here, where the highlights actually captures this part of it. The whole entire thing here where everything is white. There's another thing about center lights. This part, but then you have highlights here on this part. Same thing happens here uh, to that woman in red. The blue thing is the center light and then you have the highlight inside of it. Which is this part. The next thing what we are going to have is half tone. And basically half tones are tones in between the the light form, you know? It could be also in the shadows a little bit. But most of the time we focus on the light because it's way more easier to distinguish. So there's another term of it. Uh, we also uh, we try to see it like values, you know. And basically values are different types of tones. And in values all those things come a little bit together if for example if I if I have here, for example, the lightest light, you know, let me take this one here. It's actually way more easier. And the darkest dark, not the darkest dark, but you guys get it. And then we push it around. This is our value tone, basically. And it basically explains the thing in our values how our picture is depicted, you know? And if we go back here again and put it in black and white, we see here everything in values. It's actually, and by the way, uh, before I forget it, it's way more easier, easier uh, to learn about light if you paint it in black and white. The reason why, because you have color theory and you have this value of light theory, you know, and light goes up and down, it can be uh, full of light and full uh, and complete dark. So the next thing in our program, uh, and it's about uh, core, wait a minute, I ex explained core shadow, the shadow form, nice. Now about ambient occlusion or occlusion shadow. We always say or sometimes say occlusion shadow and it's basically this thing here, how it goes around, a better a better thing to actually explain it is actually this kind of picture. And what you see here is everything based on occlusion shadow. So occlusion shadow works where all these corners are, you know? Everything what you see here in grayscale is occlusion shadow. It's the it's a little bit of a thing where uh, that it's like lines, you know. Imagine you have lines. That's what occlusion shadow does sometimes to us, but not on this part. Why not? Because it's the lightest light here. Making everything based on occlusion shadow or occlusion occlusion, ambient occlusion, it's really hard because there are two different types of uh, occlusion. What happens, one is soft and one is really hard. There's, the hard part is here, you know? But then you have the soft part which goes around the light. And it creates basically a small tran a smooth transition between the object and the actual form of it. Uh, the object between the object and the light source. Now we have here uh, shadow cast. This is the shadow cast. Keep keep in mind that you have penumbra. 
So that means the farther away it is, the softer this shadow cast gets. Uh, reflect light, I explained about that. Rim light, explained about that. Uh, half tone, terminator, reflect light. You can also, I can also give you an example on reflect light because basically it's the reflection. You see a really huge target here, you know? Something that is crazily uh, highlighted. But then it reflects something. Maybe it's this kind of target. That's why we have this light also here. It's not sometimes the rim light, it's also the occlusion thing going here around, which is the occlusion light a little bit, but also in the same time the rim of it. We have here occlusion, occlusion here, occlusion here, reflect light here. Same happens to this one. And that's why movies are really amazing when it comes to this part. They have so much reflect light that it, it uh, that uh, they can describe an amazing scene out of it on, and based on uh, reflects they try the best scenery to choose for it or maybe add some no another light source because usually there's more than just one light source in a scenery. Uh, take Terminator as as an example. Terminator has basically one light source here and another one here. So we have two different light source and maybe one in front which makes three of it. That means one light hits this type of target, which goes like this, you know, everywhere. That means it's from a direction, right? But we need to understand where this direction goes. And I think the easiest thing is just make a ball, a ball from up, depending where it is, and just try to, to hit it with that because it's like, as I said, like a fire hydrant, fi uh, the thing that they, the firefighter use to distinguish fire, which is really amazing because now we understand where the light source came from, right? Because here is the rim, li uh, rim light. Everything is based on tho those things that actually helps me really much out and maybe this one too. So it's in between those that it happens that somewhere here up the light is coming from, you know? And because this one, because it's a head, it get uh, it blocks the light uh, source from it. And because of the dynamic of it, it also blocks it. So the next part is... Hmm... the Oh yeah. I need to take that out. So, uh, let me just change the light. So what we do here on how to practice tho those all of those lights uh, is by taking the words out, completely out I mean, and just copy that over. You, n you know for a fact uh, that what what could happen inside of this ball. Uh, maybe I take this one out. It's actually way more easier. So I take this one out and I just try to describe it, the right term of it, you know. This is Terminator. Terminator. Did I get it right? Let's see. And yes, I got it right. The next one is, so describe all of those things. Reflect light, okay, reflect light. But all together, you know, reflect light. Core shadow. Core shadow. 
penumbra penumbra which is funny in Romanian we say on the umbra because this uh this too isn't by it's the cast uh, also shadow cast shadow form and so on as long as you do this and you have it then in your brain you uh if i'm honest i i just needed one week for it to actually know everything again you know because i keep trying to tell me what all of these things does and what it is you know and what and yeah what it does basically and then I go back, make made a ball without looking it and try to describe everything and until I have everything in my head, I know for a fact what it does then and also I can remember because I know for a fact what it does, right? But the thing is how do we practice those things? Uh, how do we practice uh in sceneries, the best way to practice actually the ball is taking a scenery here. And by the way, if you want, depending on what you want to learn, you know, do you want to learn only okay how the light works? Then it's actually completely fine to use the airbrush. Not if you want to learn okay how the the actually how to apply those lights into your drawing, right? Because we paint or we draw it. Uh, if we have a sketch of it, you know, it's probably much more sim simplified. And then we draw under the sketch. And we try all of those things to define in a much more easier way. This is the core shadow. It goes like this, okay, it comes from up. So I need to basically make it a little bit much more simplified. And then just in one get-go, I have all of the light sources here, which is truly really amazing. And to actually correct it, to see if if this works, you know, there's another reflect here going on. Let's actually see. And this is only for figuring out how the light works. A little bit of a rim light. Little bit of highlight, center light. Nice. So we captured immediately the ball. And depending what do you want to capture, because there are different light sources. For example, here on this scene, uh, not on this scene, but actually on this terminator scene, we have actually two light sources. We try only to understand this light source, okay? So don't uh, overhelm yourself if it comes to that. To the ball. Okay, I think we start with the half tone. Oh my god, that's that's extremely that goes so extreme. Towards it, okay that was the highlight. There's barely a terminator, the terminator is together with the with the thing. That's how amazing that, that scene is. A little bit of a stronger light source, but the much more weaker one. Okay, the next one. It's funny. Somehow, Terminator, Terminator, we use the Terminator. Uh, let's see, the darkest dark goes here. Nice. And we don't even. He has one highlight here, cent uh, center light, and then probably this one is the terminator, which goes this one, which goes around. There is so much shadow that we ba barely see what's happening. 
at the later on. I see for a fact that there is another black tone here, but it comes from the opposite part of it. So that means this bar makes another dark thing here, which creates this, this shadow. And this is only for, for learning. Uh, if you try to learn textures or try to paint, as I said, use brushes, different brushes as the airbrush. Because it's way more harder, it takes you a way more longer time to actually execute those things, you know. Now, half tone, uh, center light, center light, okay, nice. And now, somber is the highlight. And that's the amazing thing about it. We have two light sources. It's truly amazing. You can practice those elements non-stop. It's actually okay. Okay, next one. Uh, let's see what we have here. I. This is the reflect one. So that means but we just straight up don't care. We can actually capture based on the colors uh, his uniform or his head. So I can do two balls with one with the tone and colors about this one or with the colors and tone about this one here, the uniform. But we know for a fact that it comes from up. So we need to do it from up. Uh, let me take it, make it darker. Shadow cast, and then we have a reflect light, which goes down, down up. So that means the reflect happens somewhere here. But not that strong. Nice. The car shadow is so strong here that we can barely see it, but... Did we capture that element? No. There is this thing going on. And now we only need to capture the rim of it. This is one good way to actually learn about light sources way more faster. And actually, if you take it in black and white, you have a way more easier time to actually learn about it. Uh, this is one way how to practice light in, in different kinds of scenery. And by the way, if you want to search a few of your... a few things, a few sceneries, then just Google uh, the name of it and just uh, write trailer. So for example Blade Runner trailer, this is the Blade Runner trailer by the way. Uh, I just took it from the internet, just press, I just press press, you know. And then I I got got the reference, I just uh, copy and paste it then after from the, from a YouTube video on it. So keep in mind that's actually happened. Uh, that you can do that, totally do that. Okay. What does this one? Nice. In the middle. And then we have it. Uh, not all the way. It seems like there's another one and this is the highlight and the center light. With a bit stronger.
Nice. So you guys totally captured out his skin right now. There is, I think, nothing to capture, only maybe. Uh, let me see, probably a little bit of reflect light. But this, that is barely visible because here, on this part, you know, here, under his, uh, on his, his neck. That's what I meant. To make the action way more better and visible, I put another one here, much more lighter. So this is how you can understand uh, how it works in different types of movies if you actually try to apply it. But now, if we paint that, it's a different story and also another story if we actually choose our own colors. Because if you want to, to learn about color theory, and all that other stuff we need to actually see how can what's what's this kind of uh reddish tone it's probably around this here and let's see if i'm right i am totally wrong let's try it again with a different tone so I think this one is much more to the bright side here. Let's look if I'm right a little bit, a little bit less. Okay, but I'm still going to choose this one. It's much more less saturated now. Let's look at the darker tone. I think it's somewhere around this one. Okay, I was really, really close. It barely moved because if you move, you see the new one and the current one, right? So let me try and pre pretend that I press this uh, type of color. I chose a completely different one. Uh, did I capture this type of thing? Yeah, a little bit. You know? You can always adjust your colors based on that. Uh, and it helps you way more out to understand colors faster. But now we are going to draw it. And drawing is basically way, way more harder. We always try bigger brushes. Uh, I think I'm going to do only the custom part. Uh, so I need to choose red. I go with the tone first and then with the dark one. Seems like the dark part is from behind and the light part is here. Uh, I chose a different type of color. And this is one way how to approach it. It takes a long time to actually do it really correct. I just tried to choose black here. Because can you capture it? Probably. You know? And then later on after you achieved what how it looks like and probably I take the, the floor a little bit down to have a way more easier time to actually draw it. Because do I draw it literal like I I mean paint it literal like how I paint this light source and that's the thing what you should think about it. When it comes to studying light and colors picking colors is easy. But knowing what kind of uh indication it is and what I mean with indication is basically what is the darkest dark in in a value tones because value tones we read it from 0 to 10 which is 100 here so based on that I can go my tone could yeah, at least in a painting could totally have a ratio between 77% up to 40 or uh, 35, so it's between a ratio to from 3 to 7. So how many different uh, in-between value tones are, you know? That's the big question because after 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have three to uh, 5 tones, but decided to put everything together. 
because the more uh, value tones you have, the harder it gets to draw it. The lesser you have, for example, I just straight up take it in a comic stylization and took this one. So it has 80, 50% and then about 21 or let me say 13%. And then, then we, we put this tone together non-stop in our, in our source, in our painting. And the more we do that, the, uh, the better it gets. We basically put everything together like it is hard. Oh, God, it's so hard. I can barely keep that up. It's actually really, really hard. But I did it a little bit in a faster way. I color picked it a little bit. But at least you guys know and understand uh, how you can actually practice your light source uh, in terms of how you paint, usually paint, you know. And it needs to be literal uh, like the, this light source here, but in a paint, painting way, you know. If you try to achieve that, and if you achieve that, uh, you understand light way more. But it can be only achieved sadly through practice. Only if you understand this light source, that's the thing. After I practice this, it's time, I think, to do some, to add some other knowledge. We know now, okay, how, how we can practice different types of light source. So color pick it, if you really try to understand how to paint. Is there a side pinned message to see how the teacher will schedule it for the evening server? I like to follow more teachers, but it's been hard to keep track. Yes, it's. Uh, you can usually look it on class schedule. On the on class schedule, I I don't really know. Actually, um, we actually plan it to do that. Based on a uh, on notion, probably, and it's going to be, you know, much more later. We still try to figure everything out. Probably we don't use notion and so on, but we we still communicate in a way. So don't worry. So there's a list, a calendar, where everyone is up to that. But I don't know if we actually I said too much. If I'm honest. But keep in mind, we we try as best as we can to use this class schedule uh, on Discord to actually tell ourselves uh, which one is uh, games or which one is going to teach this week. But yeah, anyway. Uh, let me actually go to the next part. Uh, we know everything now about how to practice it. Now it's, uh, I think, time to actually study it in a completely different way. And tell you guys about mood paintings uh, in terms of study approach. Uh, how to study paintings, you know. Especially when it comes to, uh, about this because it, it it depends how, uh, what you want to study because there are different types of stu study. You can go for the overall thing, which is the path of an illustrator. It takes longer than a day to actually study it, but then you get all of these things uh, together a little bit right. Then, but then you have the specific type of thing and probably this takes you 30 minutes each painting where you actually focus just on one thing, which is the form, probably the lights, the colors, the composition and the perspective. 
this comes later on into play and it's then much more easier for you to understand what's going on in a scenery if you just keep practicing that. But how do we practice that? Well, basically, you take a picture from the internet. Right now I have some artists, usually you do it with a real life reference. But this serves also a good purpose. So I want to study and I take the timer here. Uh, where's the timer? Nice. So I have the timer here. And that basically tells me how long it takes me uh, to do all these things. But not right now. Uh, I'm going to explain it way more further here down the road. What's important now? No, no, okay, right. So why we do, why we focus on just one thing? Uh, probably because it helps our brain to focus on one target and le it learns us my much more faster the things to do. Your brain is keeping them faster and faster up depending on how you paint, you know, because if you set a timer, you have, for example, 10 minutes to draw it. Then you do it again. Okay, it doesn't look very well. But slowly, after the first and the second picture, maybe the tenth picture, it gets slightly better. The same happens with practice. We need a lot of practice to actually do that. Uh, to take in mind, what do you need to take in mind, uh, especially when it comes to mood painting, so painting or at least studying mood paintings is uh, take a break every 30 minutes. It's absolutely important because you need to refresh your mind and tell your mind then in the break, okay, I need to change this and this one and then criticize yourself by how much you have actually achieved based on uh, the, the actual overall of the picture, you know, the overall of your study. Start with, um, but by the way, we can also do it in one hour. So this is start with five up to 30 minutes target on one hour. That basically means we can start with five minutes, two times five minutes drawings, or two times 10 minutes drawings, or one time 30 minutes. So we have an hour to deal with, uh, with the study, but each uh, for, uh, each 30 minutes a break, a break, or we go right through the the entire thing. So minimalistic, uh, we can also change it. Uh, we don't need to do it only like this. Maybe one one time five minutes, then ten minutes, then fifteen, and then thirty. We have now a bigger thing going on here. Uh, Meanwhile, okay, you have five minutes, but it takes longer. I think the best way to actually do that, um, I'm gonna set up my own uh, one for 30 minutes. I'm going to do probably for two minutes, just one painting. And we actually do that in a way of practice. And by the way, this one is from Bota, Stepano. And it basically explains what happens if uh, a picture or a painting uh, doesn't have the right thing uh, in our fundamental. For example, if you don't get light or colors, okay, this is what this explains basically, the hierarchy of it. Uh, it explains how a picture could, can be built. What's the first thing where you uh, you go when you're painting or drawing a picture. And this is the abstract art creates strong images, which is, you saw me painting in chaos, completing chaos, you know? But then I use it the dynamic way, which is the second part, and add a really special kind of color into that scene, which is the third thing here. And create, and then I can can create based on those colors much more a better light source. Then after that, and over 
overall be better painting with it. This is one way to look at it. The third thing is about composition. Uh, even though this is full on composition and then dynamic and then color slides. Schematics are basically a visual library, uh, not a visual library, but fundamentals. That's the schematics. We can also add symbols and then later on details. Uh, our picture needs to read, definitely needs to read. And, and our picture does in the third thing not always need a masterpiece to be, you know. It's it serves one purpose, to capture the elements of your project or to capture the elements of the thing that you try to imagine. This one is, for example, the, the second part of, uh, of it, versus this one probably, what I do here, is the first part of it, which we are only capture abstraction, dynamic colors and light. And how abstract could it be? Well, maybe I chose different kinds of brushes, but defies the logic of it, you know. And it could be, it could look like every anything uh, based on this picture. Maybe I go a little bit down with it, then I now understand. Okay, those are buildings, you know. Based on those buildings, I can actually set something really here high and make it way more better. Because it's so abstract, I can basically imagine things uh, what it is or what it could be, right? And this is up to you to decide what it is. Uh, after you study, make a few study paintings, paintings you can actually, uh, after you study those paintings, you can capture those elements, uh, what you learn from your paintings, you know. But let me go right now to a five minute drawing, okay. What I try to do right now here is, is I try to capture only the shapes or the colors or at least choose three things. I don't try anything else. The rest of my brain does it automatically. I'm gonna learn that way more later than down the road and it comes but I just try to focus on the shape part how does it look like you know so let me actually try that out okay uh, I can color pick it you know but if you want to learn more about colors uh, don't pick it you know usually you don't pick it uh, I just try to capture the shape. Easier it would be if I go like this big enough. I just try to capture the shape. Forget about the rest of the thing. Because the it's not important uh, to make a perfect picture. It's important to capture one, understand one element as it goes, you know, and then later on you can apply more of it. Let, there's a green stuff here. Let me actually add this one, but not the shape part. Uh, I think it's like this, okay, nice. Then it gets warm, it goes up. There are probably some people here. And we can capture only the shape part. We have only three minutes now. I tried much more less than three minutes to do it. But it's, I think, way more plausible to do it with three minutes. Don't use details. Try to capture it. Only capture shapes. I don't try to use any details at all be loose as possible and probably some green and yellow stuff over it there's some dark stuff here it goes around somewhere there's another thing what is that 
it looks like sci-fi technology put together You can make the other part really dark. They have a much more easier time uh, to deal with it. This part, part stays like this. And uh, the other part goes like this. Okay, nice. We capture those elements non-stop. Later on, uh, in if you have time, you can actually make your own based on imagination your own mood paintings but right now it's important to actually study those paintings and right now I chose the hardest difficult ever because it's colors, it's lights, everything it has so much uh, what goes into into this thing you know and capturing the, that is really hard Especially when when it comes capturing it with colors. You have a way more harder time to do it. And let's see, the shape goes like this. And there's something yellow. Okay. But this is the a hard one. Let's choose someone, something else. And I already am over three minutes. Uh, let's choose the darkest dark. Keep in mind. Oh, this is too much. Yeah, let's choose this one. I just tried to capture all of these shapes what goes around. Then later on it goes somewhere else. Maybe more, maybe it goes much more down. Okay. Usually I have prepared already a video about it, or not already, I mean, I should totally make a video, a speed painting, where I actually capture all of those elements for you guys. But then you, you're never going to learn uh, what's, what's like uh, to actually start with it, you know, you have only three minutes or maybe much more less time but at least you capture the overall picture sometimes it's also okay to experiment with uh, different types of pictures you know it doesn't need to be uh, that crazy uh, the same thing the same brush that's what I meant adding different kinds of brushes then you have a different kind of direction, now a different one. Here is something. We can actually capturing capture much more the light of it, which is definitely way more stronger here. Or I have a better idea. We take this one, go to shine or add some color dodge. Let's see what's happening. Then we add again gray. We can always do that non stop. We learn about the dynamic thing here, what's going around, which is really nice. Then I understood okay, it goes way more down. We try always to, to figure out how these shapes work. And it ta can take us months, maybe, uh, not months, but days, to actually completely paint one, one thing here, you know? Not one thing, but one, 
an entire building. Right now I warm myself up to, to figure out how everything works. But I think I'm done with this one. Because I couldn't capture it very much. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done this one. And this one is really hard. This one is really hard too. So chose simple ones, not what I chose here. It is really, really hard to do that actually with those kind, kind of things. This one is a little bit easier. I can capture probably exactly what I want here. The blue thing. There's some elements here. Nice. Again. Again, okay. And then another one. Is that is that right? No. Then the blue one. And here's another podest or column. I think it's called column. Yeah. And as you probably see, we try non-stop to capture only the shapes of it. We don't try anything else. It's just based on shapes, so we should take it as shapes. There's another thing going on on the background here. This one is much more farther away. But then we can go here and split the shape. And the other one, it ha is round. Is it, it? It is way more round here on the surface. Then it goes to black. And maybe it's broken because it looks like broken. Here is a triangle. Yeah, maybe I sh should paint it in black. It's actually way more easier. This is most of the complicated shapes that I ever did, I think. Capture another element here. And this one works together with this one, nice. Then we have another element here. This is like a triangle. Uh, yeah. We gonna definitely get in creative in this one. <laughs> Until to the point where it looks literally like the picture, if you want to capture that. And now this one probably could help us if we take this everything out because right now, okay, that was not even a, a real study, you know. Usually you should take a real reference or a really amazing picture and then study it for 30 minutes and then take a break. But more for that, uh, later, because right now if, uh, we are over an hour and I really need to take a break. So we see us in five minutes, okay?
Okay. Okay, we are back. So, what I going to do right now is talking about mood board. But before we do, uh, I want to happy birthday, Nita. But before that, uh, I want to actually cap, cap, uh, put a disclaimer on the light thing. Um, this is only the beginning of it. I could definitely talk about more, but it takes us over two months or three months to actually completely uh, teach you about light sources because each of them, how how light would rea react in a room or how light would react in uh, from the sun or about the Fresnel effect in terms of material or what happens if you have a puddle, a water puddle on it or it's if it's over a water puddle, what happens then? So it's just a small example, but at least you know the beginning part, how to learn that. But the more information you gain, uh, gain uh, from light, you know, you need really to study the, the light stuff. And it takes you uh, two months to actually fully learn that if you learn non-stop of it and practice those and try to study. So let's talk about, uh, yeah, we actually did that. This is the first thing, the first practice routine. Talked about this one. Then I studied a little bit, at least a little bit of it. Another way how we know how uh, now, how we study, but I probably make uh, at the weekend a study speed paint for you guys, uh, and I capture that, and I basically show you guys, okay, how does it really work, and how we can capture each element based on this thing, you know, but what's working here. So, but anyway. What you see guys here is um, built up things that I took from and that I took up from wait a second Okay, I'm sorry. I my apology. I was uh, someone asked me about something. So let's go back to our mood paintings. So in the industry, usually mood paintings are done right at the beginning or on the start to capture all of those elements into our production. You know, and I I think that's the best way to actually describe. Uh, what you want actually to do because then later on we can go here and just try to make a concept out of those things later on after we we did a really nice mood painting. But that for later on, how to practice those elements. Uh, what you guys saw, definitely we studied it, but now it's time to take those key elements in from our study into the elements of uh, of our mood painting, and I usually do more than than a few of those things. I try to be abstract as possible, but try to capture. Uh, I think this thing here, you know, with pyramids, or maybe we can go way beyond that and just draw normal type of um, a normal thing, you know, a normal environment where it's basically about uh, how is it called? I I completely for forgot about the environment. 
you know where you guys catch on just uh, the background instead of buildings. It's actually way more easier to start with the background instead with the buildings. And I try to be as abstract as possible. And usually with reference, so let's capture that with reference. That's a landscape. Yeah, landscape. I'm sorry. Yeah. I forgot the right no word for it. Thank you. Uh, let's actually use our, our previous stuff here. What we captured here. It's actually, I just need one thing from it. Usually you do it with me more, but it's completely fine. So we do one each. Right now I want to study about color, so everything is in black and white. And we actually set this one also on black and white. They have a way more easier time in, in grayscale. That's what I meant. So we have everything in grayscale. And now the only way is to actually draw that amazing scenery. I can go with the blackest black. I'm just gonna put it somewhere. And the white is white. Nice. Usually you do much more than that. It's just landscapes. But you then feel much more comfortable with it, you know? You you learn about dynamic and you learn about, okay, how you can capture really fast uh, a painting. Or how you can capture really fast your mood into your project in terms of that. Because maybe this could be something. Maybe it, it could be a building. Maybe it could be anything but it's up to you to decide where, what you want to, to actually capture and that's the cool thing about mood paintings especially when it comes to to environment because then you can also add culture into that you can add so many different types of things we can actually experiment way more with different types of solution, for example, color dodge, where we dodge everything together. This one could be a color dodge too, this one here too. Add different types of elements, what makes yeah, your painting way more easier. For example, also bash everything together and draw over it. That's another thing. And by the way, I, I remember my teacher who taught me about uh, light and his name was I think Dorian Even. and Dorian Even is basically the number one light artist uh, when it comes to learning light from him he's a really amazing teacher and he teaches you, teach you guys way more better than what I do but his course uh, costing so much money but for that it's all worth it Now we need to capture this type of element. What do I want to draw here? Oh, a rock. Let's draw some rock formation here. Then I can take some of those pictures and make them even better. Right now abstraction is the key element of it. What do I see here? Uh, let's change actually the brush. D uh, Dorian, Dorian, D O R. Wait a minute, actually, I, I wrote it down. Dorian. And it's with an Ethan. Item. You know, Item. This is how his name is spelled. Did I spell it right? No, uh, uh, the E at the beginning needs to be go away. It's not E. Oh, it's it's I T E N. I T E N. Yeah, that's I how it, it name his name is. He's a really amazing light artist, and actually the best of them all. 
he teaches stuff that you usually don't uh, get into many other schools, you know. For example, about Penumbra, what I guys told, what I told you about it, which is, he explains more than eleven light source. So let me say that instead of nine, nine are most of the time in the books and center light, and I think center light and Penumbra really needs to be uh, talked about more because it's not uh, center light is not the highlight; it's between the highlight. It's actually the center of the highlight. Uh, or around the highlights, but people don't talk, and then after that it came, the half tone came in. Let me actually change that. Penumbra uh, is, and penumbra is basically, as I told you guys, uh, the light source at it as it fades away. I actually really like that one. So nice. Another thing here. The next part of it. Okay, nice. I think we captured as many as possible. Let's see actually which one I like. I like this one. And we do only a couple of those things. We do only those three elements. So let's see what we can figure out about those light things. The only thing what we need to do is rocks, stones, or trees, or or grass. Those are the, those three things that we, we usually study most of the time when it comes to to landscape paintings. Because we barely do the, the other things. Even though, yes, we do it, but it takes us a long time to do it. So now each of them, probably it's going to take me 10 minutes. Let me actually say 10 minutes to it, okay. Which is really beautiful. Oh my god, I cannot believe I did this. Capture it with different brushes, actually. Let's capture it way more better. Now we can come here and capture it with more. Because this one, painting, mood painting, teaches us about foreground, background, and midground. This one, for example, is what I paint over it is the midground. This one is the background. This one is the foreground. Depending how your values are structured, you can totally uh, change it however you want. But back to the mood painting part, so mood paintings are really really nice and as I said, you it helps your product uh, to establish way more faster as in other things, you know, because it's so hard to do a, a one concept that is its own. You then later on figure out the purpose of it and the purpose you see in the mood painting, okay, why, why is it there? What reason do we capture those elements? Uh, yeah, let's make the other part black. Let's take a middle brush now and paint much more, a little bit much more details. I want probably a rock on, uh, formation here, but actually describes it like a door, you know, if you if you ever saw Lord of the Ring, maybe I can add here Minas Tirith, or maybe another city. So yeah, try to figure out as much as possible about, mood, uh, about your mood and the thing that you want to pick, because some of you guys actually uh, tried something different as a strategy game and for you guys this one is really really important to capture all uh, the people on the street for example or uh, all that crazy type uh, when it comes to building things but this one what I do right now is designing from 
outside in so I come from the picture outside in and it basically what I mean by that and I actually explained that last day that imagine a helicopter being here and he basically put this on into that we can actually change that uh, later on let's try some different kinds of rocks it's actually way more easier take it and make it black a little bit because right now we try to figure out what we actually see here okay this one goes down I don't like this brush let's change it into a different one hmm this one yeah, this one looks cool enough And you see, I, I don't zoom out. I actually usually am the guy if I do mood paintings, I never zoom out, I only change the pictures, the direction of the picture. And that's basically it. Because the more you, you zoom, I mean, zoom in, the more details you're going to have, the better way is actually zooming much more out. And I, I told you guys that I zoom out, uh, I usually don't zoom out. I mean, what I mean by that is I don't zoom in. And let me actually set the opacity a little bit low because I wanted to capture more stuff here. We aren't probably make this one way more brighter. Because the more we do that, the easier it gets. The more you zoom out, the more you can capture your shapes and forms. Okay, nice. I think I probably have that. And I'm much more, probably, probably here I can uh, capture those buildings. And don't do it way too fast. You can actually chill and have a nice time in while you draw shapes all over it. Again, we can also start much more loose than that. You don't need to be... Uh, you don't need to draw it with really small brushes. Because small brushes only hinders yourself. Keep in mind that we don't do details at the beginning. We try at first to capture all that elements first before we even try to to paint something, you know. And that's uh, the most important part uh, if it comes to building uh, your picture or building up your picture. Probably I can also change change it into line drawing, you know. Even though it's probably not line drawing, not probably, but you guys completely understand me, but. As I said, it's, it's not line drawing, it's painting. And probably I can also capture that with line drawing, but only with lines, as I said. It's way more fast and way more... Uh, you get that shape right sometimes. So the next one, let's add a multiply here to actually capture the values. Make it here way more dark. Probably I can add here a black tone. Nice. And probably here I can set it up where light is coming from the other side of it. So let's do that with the magnet tool. Gradient tool back to normal because I I don't like multiply. Now the magnet tool. Nice. Now we captured actually a few elements how we want how we want to do that. 
<clears throat> so next picture what do I see here I see some really weird landscape going on and uh, let's capture the bigger with a bigger brush and this landscape is much more in front it's from inside out that means maybe there is a bridge or something where a ton of rocks are and it goes into different pa paths you can also capture one here one element here which is way more easier then a little bit of white uh, yeah I'm about to lose my voice I'm sorry I probably talk too much. Uh, this one fades away because it's far farther away from it, from the point. Nice. And probably we can turn our picture, what we have here, but we actually started a little bit here and turn it into a different kind of design based on that one so columns what's uh, what's important I think columns and other type of stuff we can probably add much more into our painting but right now what I think is important is to capture only the things what we see rather or the thing but it is abstract to us rather than actually thinking about it. We need to relax first before we actually capture some really difficult elements. This is like a rock. Then it goes probably down here. So it's like a canyon, I would say. I think round brushes are way more easier to use. Okay, next one. It it took me way too much time. So the next one is I basically copy that. Let let me let me make it smaller. And there's actually a trick what I try here now to do. I copy a couple of stuff and make some repetition out of it. which also creates so much value and it's a way more faster way to actually approach those paintings. This could be for example really far away. Okay, nice. Probably I can capture it with a few drawings. And as you guys see, it's way more faster, way more approachable. Even though it's really... Feel free to take a water break. I'm going to do that definitive, definitely. But yeah, if you use round brushes, it's it's actually way more comfortable. And there are different ways how to make moods. As I said, you can use photobash and all that other stuff, but that later on. Because right now we try to study and try to capture all our elements into a picture and into our project way before we start with the other things
As you guys probably see, I take non-stop, I color pick non-stop. You guys probably should do that too and use much more the lasso tool. It's way more easier way to capture all of those elements that goes around into an, an environment. Especially when it comes to the painting part of it. And now probably I make some water type of thing going on here. Because I want to do a to do a canyon based on the last thing. And maybe our building is going to be somewhere here. Okay. Let's put it on color dodge. No, it doesn't work. Let's use it again. Yeah, okay. Then you make it way more black. And then probably from here, I can add some buildings, you know. But this is not made for buildings. Only if I establish probably some different kinds of... I need a, a grid, a perspective grid for it, to actually capture that way more better. But yeah, here is probably the columns. And probably there's another type of a... How we see that? This thing. This canyon. Add here some lights. Because each light comes from here and from here, so we need really to hit all these columns right now with light. As I said, you, ju you just capture the mood, don't worry about everything else. Nice. So I think we are a little bit done with our picture, even though it doesn't look very good. There's another way how we do it, and that we can we can do it based on shapes, without those opacity, opacity things and flow. We just take a really big brush and try as at least to capture all that that elements. So everything is in one or two colors. That's another way how we can actually apply our things. Our painting. Because later on I can go over that black thing. And then just use different types of layers and just draw it. You know for a fact how it looks like. And this could be maybe a ruin or something that is really destroyed. Let's see where the light is going and where it's coming. Nice. So here's another thing about it. Create a clipping mask. And then you need only to paint with a normal run brush over it. This is one technique that I sometimes use, depending on uh, what I actually want to capture. And it's a way more faster way to approach light. But it's it's a really hard technique, especially if you don't understand shapes. Mm. 
Okay, the next one. Let's add some other different types of light scenarios here. That thing really needs to be. Maybe here is a some kind of weird podest going on. And I can capture much more of it. You know it's about this thing. And it needs to shine strong on it. This is our story element in this thing. Depending if you want to do a third person uh, game, you can totally do that. Drawing compositions based on story. That is the wrong brush. Let me try this one. Okay, way more better. But it needs to be behind it. It's way too strong. If you have some questions about mood paintings and other type of stuff, then you can ask me. Meanwhile, I'm going to draw uh, my mood painting. So feel free to ask me anything. No, no, if you want to see from movies, I would suggest the website so deck. The guy complained Tom Let's and steal from a lot of movies and it's ever growing. Uh okay. Uh then let's look later at that. Thank you. Uh, Celestia. Another thing, we can also do it realistic, depending of, of, of the brush, you know. We can definitely capture much more elements. But right now this is enough to give us an idea how we can capture all of those elements in our production, you know. And I could totally put uh, my Viking type of project here in the canyon, you know. I do something in 3D. And probably or probably immediately paint here the the house, you know. And then you can add maybe palisades for the defending yourself, you know. This goes maybe more further away. And another thing here. Add much more house. And another one here. Probably here one. We just try to capture elements. So don't worry about the whole thing. Because later on we're going to fix it. After maybe 30 minutes into that drawing or 40 minutes. But yeah. We have now totally captured those elements. From... Uh, into our project. And now, now next time it's time to to take it further, you know. But I definitely going to do a speed painting out of it. Uh, to make you guys way more easier to understand how far can you push it. Because right now I just wanted to go fast through it 
to explain you different kinds of variations how to approach it. For example, you can also do it in a way more simplistic stylization or uh, simplistic composition, where I can probably put here uh, all of those buildings, you know. Then another one here, maybe way more smaller. And probably one here. Way more, way more buildings. We can probably make it way more smaller. Okay, nice. This one doesn't look right. So let's capture it somewhere here. After you have your environment, landscape, you can totally add buildings. Or you, if you want, you can immediately capture it. It's up to you guys. Uh, make it as easy as, as possible to actually capture all of your elements that you guys have in your painting rather than destroying your your whole entire composition, okay? Because sometimes it fails, sometimes it does not. It's up to you guys uh, how you guys decide uh, to work on it. Because there are so many different ways to do mold paintings. And I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, but this this thing really goes into some different types of things and I also it's hard to talk about uh, mood paintings and in the same time drawing it it's really hard probably I can also put here some another building you know a little bit of wood and you see uh, that I I to took it a little bit down with the values if you see that it's really so close together, but then later on, after i done it, I can simply take uh, the color dodge part or something that is, or a filter, you know, and go to hue and saturation, uh, create clipping mask of course, where is it? Is it this one? Come on, no, no, yeah. Put it in the higher place. So they're completely different over there. And now you can make it way more brighter. Before and after it. Or probably we can go to the layer and add less more light tones into that. Combine everything together and figure all everything out. It's about mood painting, you know. It's up to you to decide how you want to do it. But there are so many approaches that goes around. At least don't overhang yourself. Uh, into the process of en uh, environment mood paintings. And it could be also a keyframe as long if I add much more stuff, much more values into that that thing. What I mean by values is basically okay, adding much more objects, you know. Maybe here is rocks, different types of rocks, you know. This could be a podest, maybe a palisade, then a main building, main hall, but we actually capture, captured a little bit. Can totally do this. But it needs to be the same big thing as here. That's too small.
Okay, nice. Probably add some much more crazy light here. It could work, it could work everything. But that's too much into the detail part. But as long as you captured everything, it's nice. Maybe another thing, another bridge, I could add so much more into that painting. Different types of rocks. Maybe they, were, they are somewhere in China. And that we say China is the new Viking thing. And I can totally add some different types of rocks what you usually see in China. Different, uh, I mean, based on the form, uh, formation, you know. Treat it as a concept. Uh, don't see it as an artist's job, you know, artist thing. When it comes to mood paintings, at least at the first thing, in the first way. When you try at least to to warm yourself up or approach it in a different way, it's really important to not get your overwhelmed with your artistic thing, which is actually fundamental and idea seeking, you know. But then as long as you do millions of it, or you warm yourself up with it, it's totally fine. Because the mindset is actually, you know, it's actually, uh, you need to think like a designer, not like an artist. Because artists, if I think like an artist, I would think nonstop about, okay, how do I refine those things? How do I refine my mistakes? And that's the thing. But I try to prevent, make you guys prevent from it. It's much more easier to fix things for a couple of days than to think about uh, about your idea. Which comes sometimes into play. Uh, okay, this one I could totally make it black. Then way more. Nice. Later on we establish much more, but I think we already have everything together. So homework. Uh, if you guys want, you can totally uh, not study this. But there are actually free homeworks if you guys want. Uh, first thing is capturing the ball, you know. Learning first about you, what you actually see, so that means full-on airbrush. Choose the the round uh, tool, what sel uh, the selection round tool, and just paint with airbrush and capture the light. Not colors, only light. And yeah, you can also make it in black and white to have it a way more easier time to capture light. But if you learn a Want to learn okay about different type of colors you can totally learn to paint that that's the second stage of the homework and the third one is actually try to learn about color theory and let me say i take for example this uh orange let me capture that okay nice and now I test it out, if it's the right one. It's slightly off, but it's good enough. And then you paint with those things, but you will learn to capture into this ball. And take in mind these value tones. Because the moment, the more you see, the more values it has, uh, the harder it gets. For example, like this Terminator one, I need a, it has two light sources. One comes from the left, one comes from the right side. So yeah, 
you can totally uh, learn that. So there are actually three homeworks here. Incredible. Learning about uh, color theory, capturing it with understanding or capturing it with approach. The Discord channel is, if you are not a student, then you should totally go to uh, bot comments and write that down student. I wrote it down on the on the app uh, on Twitch. If you guys want uh, to join the uh, that stuff, not here, not on the the Twitch channel, on somewhere in the bot command on even backer server. Okay, nice. Uh, should I repeat it again, or is that clear? What what you guys need to learn here? Because I did this thing, you know, this kind of thing, this one, in a different approach, then we try to figure out about colors. The fourth homework could be, okay, taking realistic pictures and actually capture that in 10, 20 minutes. But take 30 minutes of it. You know, as I said, do first shape, then light, and way more better to may, uh, to paint it in black and white. And take your time with it. I, I just rushed it, and it's too much of a rush, I think. I just wanted to do it fast because uh, we barely have time for it, and just two hours or three hours of teaching you guys that is it's really hard okay good i'm gonna write down the home assignment then if everyone wants to join then the homework uh, just sign in with the with the nano as you guys know And then you can basically post your assignment there. And I'm going to review it then next time. We probably, oh yeah, and next day. Next day we're gonna do three things again. Or maybe one thing, depending on what it is, how hard it is. Uh, first off, we learn about different types of types of uh, gameplay and actually approach in painting approach in painting and this is about poor gameplay okay uh, because it depends what kind of concept art uh, you need to do for example orient the white forest needs to be side view, non-stop side view where strategy games need to be literal like this, you know. You capture this element so fast as possible into a birth bird perspective, you know. So I going to explain why then the next class. It's going to be uh thank you. So these things are we going to approach it next day. It's going to take you two hours, but uh, it's going to be not that hard. We just try to to understand what type of concept art we need to do, and that's the thing about it. So everyone who moved, uh, who was here, thank you very much. And I hope uh, you guys have a nice time and I hope you guys learned something from it. We see us uh, next day, same time soon.
at 11 p.m.